Welcome to the 0478 Cambridge IGCSC pre-release material. We're going to revise task one from the last video and we're going to go over task two, inshallah. So in task one, as we said, we're setting up the screen display for the start of the day for our train station. Okay, so our, our setup screen should have the times that the trains are going up the mountain, 9, 11, 13, and 15 o'clock, the times that they're going down the mountain, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 14 o'clock, 16 o'clock, the tickets available at those corresponding times. So how many tickets are available for the 9 o'clock, the 11 o'clock, the 13 o'clock, and the 15 o'clock train, and how many tickets are available for the 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 14 o'clock, and 16 o'clock train going down the mountain. We followed three simple steps to be able to create that start of the day display. We first, you can, in, you can have a constant ticket cost equals 25, which we're going to be referring to in task two, but this is the main step one. So in step one, we declared three arrays, train up time, train up tickets and train up money. And then we declared three more arrays for step two, train down time, train down tickets, and train down money. So that was step one and step two, declaring the arrays that we need. And finally, step three was displaying all the train times and the, how many tickets are available. So if we ran this short program, of course, when we display play we need to use a for loop because we've stored the data in arrays and in order to be able to do any kind of array manipulation whether you're you know displaying the data or manipulating the data you'll be using a for loop so we used four count in range starting at zero four times showed the times of the trains going up and how many tickets and also how much money you've made and the times of the train going down and how many tickets are remaining and how much money you've made and this if you run that short code with step one step two and step three you'll come up with this table now we're on to task two task two says you know we're purchasing tickets tickets can be purchased for a single passenger or a group when making a purchase check that the number of tickets for the required train journeys up and down the mountain is available okay so you have to make sure that we still have those number of tickets available if the tickets are available calculate the total price including any group discount remember every 10th ticket is free so if you have 10 people going you only pay for nine tickets update the screen display and the data for the totals so this is one run of task two you'd ask the user to input what time would you like to go up the mountain and you'd have to validate that so if they type nine that would be accepted or 11 is accepted or 13 is accepted or 15 is accepted anything else would be an error so there's a validation you would also ask the user what time will you come down and they should type either 10 or 12 or 14 or 16. Then we'd also input the number of tickets we're going to buy. So for example, I've input 10 tickets and then I can display, you know, the total cost. So if I've, you know, if I'm buying 10 tickets up the mountain, I'd have to pay for nine of them. So nine times 225, sorry, nine times 25 is 225. Okay. And both ways, so up and down the mountain would cost 450. Also at the end of task two, we need to display the updated train screen display. So now the nine o'clock train has 470 tickets left and the 10 o'clock train has 470 tickets left because 10 tickets were purchased to go up and down the mountain. After that, we can ask the user, would you like to buy more tickets, sell more tickets? If they say yes, we'll repeat all of these again. If they say no, then task two will be over. So task two has 13 steps. Before we start the while loop of task two, we need to set a flag such as selling tickets. We're going to set it to yes. And then we're going to start a while loop. So while selling tickets is equal to yes, we're going to perform these steps, input the time that we're going up the mountain, validate the time that we're going up the mountain. And number four, search for index up, which corresponds to time up. What I mean by that is we have the train times array and it has nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, 13 o'clock, and 15 o'clock. 
it's really important to identify the index depending on our input. So if the person typed 9 o'clock, then the index in the array is 0. If they typed 11 o'clock, then the index is 1. 13 o'clock, then the index is 2. And 15 o'clock, then the index is 3. Now we're going to look at step 5, 6, and 7. For step 5, we need to input the time going down the mountain. We need to validate the time going down the mountain according to two criteria. First, there has to be tickets available on that particular train going down. Also, the time has to be after the time going up. So if you're going up the mountain at 11 o'clock, you can't go down the mountain at 10 o'clock. And finally, step seven, we're going to search for the index down. So if the person typed that they're going up the mount, down the mountain at 10 o'clock, that means the index is zero. Or 12 o'clock, the index is one. Or 14 o'clock, the index is two. Or 16 o'clock, the index is three. Now for step eight, so we've already finished step two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we know that we have a valid time to go up the mountain and we know we have a valid time to go down the mountain. We're going to input the number of tickets. And we're going to validate the number of tickets such that it's a less than or equal to number of tickets available on those particular trains. Finally, in step 10, we're going to calculate the ticket cost to go up the mountain and we're going to consider the free tickets. And of course, the cost going up and down is the same. Finally, step 11 and 12 is just to update the arrays and display them. Okay. And finally, we're going to have a prompt to ask the user, do you want to continue selling tickets? In that case, the while loop will iterate again or exit and then your task two is done. So task two has 13 steps. Before we start,
So step two, step three, and step four are related to inputting the time going up the mountain. So in step two, we prompt the user to type what time they're going up the mountain, either nine o'clock, 11 o'clock, 13 o'clock, or 15 o'clock. In step three, we implement a lookup validation. So we are right while the time up is not equal to nine and time up is not equal to 11 and time up is not equal to 13 and time up is not equal to 15. That means the time that they have typed is not valid. So we need to put an error message and ask them to retype the time. So after step two and step three are complete, we have a valid time. And it's we need to extract the index that corresponds to that time. So we run a small for loop for count in range from zero four times. If time up, so let's say the time up was nine o'clock, is equal to trains up times of count, and at the first iteration count is equal to zero, then we've, instruct, we've extracted the index, and our index up is equal to count, which is zero. So nine would correspond to zero, 11 would correspond to one, 13 would correspond to two, and 15 would correspond to three. Now that we're done with inputting the time going up the mountain, it's time for step five and step six and step seven, which are related to inputting the time to go down the mountain. So we have a variable time down is equal to int of input what time will you come down, either 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock or 14 o'clock or 16 o'clock. Now this validation is a little bit different. It has two parts. We need to validate that the user typed 10 or 12 or 14 and 16. And at the same time, we need to validate that the time they chose to go down the mountain is after the time they chose to go up the mountain. Write the validation in step six like this. While the time down is less than time up or parentheses time down is not equal to 10 and it's not equal to 12 and it's not equal to 14 and it's not equal to 16. That means the time that they have chosen is an error. So we have to show an error message and ask them to re-input the time going down. Once we've completed step five and six, we need step seven. It's a for loop that's going to be a small search algorithm to find the index that corresponds to time down. So for example, if I said I'm going down the mountain at 12 o'clock, then the index down is equal to one. So finally, it's time to input the number of tickets. So in step eight, we have a variable num tickets is equal to int input. How many tickets would you like to buy? The 10th ticket is free. Of course, we have a validation and that validation has, you know, two conditions that the number of tickets that you're purchasing has to be available both on the uptime train and the downtime train that you've chosen. So while the number of tickets is greater than, you know, the train's uptime of index up of this time you've chosen, or the number of tickets is greater than num trains down tickets of index down, so the time you've chosen to go down, that's an error. The number of tickets that you want is too large and the person has to re-input the number of tickets. So once the person has input a valid number of tickets, you know, that are available, it's time for step 10, where we calculate the ticket cost and we take into consideration the free tickets. So the trip cost is equal to cost multiplied parentheses, the number of tickets minus the integer division by 10 of the number of tickets. So for example, let's say you put 10 tickets. So the trip cost is equal to the ticket cost, which is 25, multiplied by 10 minus the integer division of 10 divided by 10 is 1. So 10 minus 1 is 9. So at the end, you're going to have to pay $225 for one way trip. And we're going to display that in step 10 as well. Finally, to end the, the while loop, we need to check our flag selling tickets. So selling tickets is equal to input by tickets, yes or no. If the person types yes, this whole procedure will repeat again for another iteration. If they press no, then task two will be complete. Here's some sample data. Let's say we're saying we want to go up the mountain at 14 o'clock, an error message would come. So we selected 13 o'clock. Okay, what time will you come down the mountain? 10 o'clock, an error would come because 10 o'clock is, you know, at an earlier time than 13 o'clock. So again, we will choose another time to come down the mountain, 14 o'clock. So we've chosen to go up at 13 o'clock and to come down at 14 o'clock. Now, how many tickets are you going to buy? 20. So one way is going to be $450 to go up because two tickets are free and 
the way to go down is going to also be 450 so the total is $900 okay and we update our trains table and as you can see at the 13 o'clock now we only have 460 available tickets at the 16 o'clock we sorry and at the 14 o'clock we have 460 available tickets now do you want to buy more tickets yes so again another iteration of our task to repeat so what time would you like to go up the mountain nine o'clock come down ten o'clock how many tickets are you going to buy 50 here is the cost and the table becomes updated thank you for watching an implementation of task two there will be some more tips and tricks because remember in task two if the tickets available have become zero we need to replace the zero with the word closed. So I will be showing another video soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.